And uh, we wanted to start our session with uh, getting you uh, up to the speed with what's new with uh, uh, Google AI technologies. And I'm very happy to introduce David Bryan from Google, who will educate us all on uh, the latest developments in AI and machine learning. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Alex. And uh, let me set up my timer. Uh, thanks, thanks so much. Is there a clicker, or how do I? Which one's, which one's forward? What do I aim it at? That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Got it, thank you. All right. Uh, so we're, we're really excited to be here uh, tonight. Very grateful for SoftServe for uh, being an amazing partner and inviting us to, uh, to speak here. Uh, if you uh, definitely uh, catch up with us afterwards, if you'd like to talk about how Google and SoftServe are working together uh, to build uh, amazing solutions in machine learning and other areas, in uh, interns, uh, other verticals. Really excited to talk about that. Uh, I'm just going to talk uh, tonight uh, very quickly, I promise, uh, on uh, just a, an introduction, like a one on one level on machine learning and, um, and then Google Cloud for machine learning. Uh, very like a lightning talk on what Google has to offer uh, in the machine learning space. Uh, it's, it's absolutely Google's area of focus. In, you know, if you think about like from a market perspective in the cloud wars, you know, like there's, there's obviously in public cloud, like there's three really big providers, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are like the three largest providers. And Google is looking for ways to, you know, from a marketplace perspective, to differentiate itself. And very fortunately, not because we're looking to do business in cloud and sell like, you know, cloud uh, cores to our customers, but because we're building it into our own products and because we need to use AI to make our products smarter, more assistive, to build things at Google that no one else can build anywhere. So we are on the cutting edge of machine learning, and we are incorporating that talk, tech, those technologies into our cloud offerings to make them available with our partners um, you know, at scale to, to many, many companies, including, you know, I, I work primarily with technology companies and startups. We have an insurance team. We have a manufacturing team, an IoT team. So we're, we're uh, you know, using these technologies Across all areas in the market, um, but what uh, you know, what what uh, is, is artificial intelligence really? So artificial intelligence is a is a just a generic um, a generic uh, way of say making machines you know as smarter or even smarter as people making machines intelligence. Machine learning is a specific branch of artificial intelligence that is about building machines that can learn. We'll get into this a lot, and uh, neural network is a key technology with the machine learning. It's the most successful, and it's a broad field, and, and uh, neural networks are the most successful and the most utilized technology within the machine learning space for solving problems in machine learning right now. Uh, so I'm, my, my background is engineering. I guess, you know, I'm, a, I'm a coder, I'm a software engineer. Um, and when I was young and stupid, if you'd asked me, you know, how long, Dave, would it take you to build Google? You know, like you need to build a search engine that searches the entire internet, and someone types something in, and you come up with the right results. And you know, when I was young and stupid, I said, "Well, that sounds really hard. That would probably take me about a month, you know, to build Google." Was, you know, that's a hard problem. So you know, I, you know, I, that would be real work. And then if the same person asked me, you know, "Well, how long would it take you to do a program that does this? Write a computer program that can tell an orange from an apple?" That's hard, right? Where do you start? If your if your background is if then else, you know, like logic, like you know, Turing machines and von Neumann architectures, this this problem is insolvable, right? The, the techniques when we all learned engineering, there was no way to solve this problem, and now it's solved, it's done. So this is something that we should, you know, take a moment to celebrate. And it's happened very, very quickly and very, very rapidly. And it's you know, it's it's happened. It's it's a, um, you know, there are two things that have happened. It's the, it's the growth and. Um, you know, the effort that's been put into these algorithms, and just as importantly, it's the massive quantity of computing that we have available to us. And that the massive quantity of computing is really important because what you can do is you can try every possible variation until you get the right results. And if, if, if every possible variation, when you're looking at pixels, when you're looking at a, an image with this resolution, is measured in the you know, billions and billions and billions. So you, you, can't, you can't discount the, the scale of the computing that's really enabling this. Um, so again, so this is, you know, on the left, this is how we all learn to program. This is, this is if then else. This is logic. On the right, neural networks. This is a, 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 a old technology that has been, you know, has been successful for quite a while. 
But the, the curve on this is astronomical. The success we're getting now with access to infinite compute and infinite storage and all of the data in the world is, is really advancing the state of this. Oops, so, so let's go. Um, so this is a neural network that we're looking at right here. This is a really you know simple question. Are we looking at a picture of a cat or a dog? So on the left, we're looking at images. And on the right, we're solving the, we're solving the problem. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're building these layers, this layered neural network. Every, every dot here is a neuron, which is making a decision based on its input level, right? And at the end, we just have a, a very finite number of possible outcomes. Uh, so what we're doing is that every layer, we're getting a little bit smarter, right? This one right here, this is where we identify whether it's got whiskers or not. You know, this one has something to do with the ears, right? And so these are, these are neurons that are built not by, you know, humans making decisions about the classification, but the computer learning over time what characteristics make up, make up a cat and make up a dog. So it's a, it's, a, it's a process where you get closer and closer to, um, to solving the problem, and the computer is, is basically just through the process of elimination, just by turning through, you know, realistically every possible, you know, every possibility is realizing that, you know, this orange color is a really good indicator that, it, you know, that it's a cat as opposed to a dog. So it's just a, it's it's a, it's going through the you know the weights of the attributes and the biases that indicate how how uh, useful they are for determining what the answer is and trying all these different combinations and solving this. What you need to do in order to succeed in machine learning is have lots of data. These 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 you, if you're you know if you're doing if you're doing neural networks if you're doing machine learning with neural networks you are starting with. Uh, you're starting with a set of data that you already know the answer to, right? So we're not trying to invent something new with the computers. We're just trying to get them to be as, at least as smart as people are, right? So none of us have any difficulty whatsoever identifying what each of, what you know what's in each of these in terms of you know cat, dog, car, apple, flower. Where what we have is we have a set of data. Uh, the questions have already been answered by humans, and we teach the computer how how to uh, learn the answer. We teach the neural network how to come up with the answer. So if you're doing machine learning today, it means you're starting with a large amount of data that's already been labeled, that you already know the answer to, and you're running it through the models, and, and you're adjusting your models, and rerunning the models, and tweaking, uh, you know, changing the hyperparameters. You're slowly getting smarter and smarter about, um, about how you're coming up with the output. So you're making tiny adjustments to the model as you, as you get smarter. About it. What this is allowing us to do is solve problems that were intractable in the industry just five years ago, how do you teach a car how to drive itself? You know, these are these are problems that could not be solved. You know, with even with you know ten times the computing power with the algorithms that we all knew and love when we came uh, when we started. Um, so um, the bad news, you know, for all of us, because this you know this, we all we all know about this. But if your company isn't good at analytics, it can't be ready for AI, right? So how do you start a machine learning project? Well, you've got to you know, cleanse all your data. You've got to centralize it into a single repository. You've got to do all that boring stuff that you did with data warehouses and big data projects and your small data projects. Like you can't, without a quality set of data, including labels that indicate what the answer is, if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to do machine learning. So it is not going to magically solve um, you know, the problems in this space. Uh, and moreover, it's not suitable to everything, right? There are some things where you know, the von Neumann architecture is fine for solving. There, there are a lot of areas where machine learning isn't a great solution. So again, it's not, it's not going to put us all out of jobs. You know, I might, you know, depending on, you know, I might put the 18-year-olds out of jobs, but I'm safe, right? So it's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's not suitable for every problem. Like, you know, but what, when I go, when I look at this, because I love insurance, you know, like think about like what, what problem, what problem in insurance tries to, you know, take an infinite number of inputs, maybe not infinite, a large number of inputs, hundreds of inputs, and they interact with each other in ways that are not intuitive and surprising and yield a single output, you know, maybe a number. You know, like this sounds like rating a risk today, right? So we've got, you know, we've got the, the, this world of all possible inputs for, you know, is, is Dave a safe driver or not? There's a lot that goes into that, including, you know, the alcohol going on back there. Like there's, you know, there's, and it, 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 they react to each other in unpredictable ways. You know, I'll probably be a much safer driver in, 10 years than I am now, and I'm you know much better in the day than in the night. So these are these are uh, you know variables that inter interact in very you know in surprising ways 
and they yield a result, right? So neural networks are, are great at that, but they're not great at it. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of possible use cases, and we've heard a lot of them for AI and insurance, and we'd be really, really excited to talk to, you know, all of you about that, whether you're in the you're in the startup space, your insurance company, uh, you know, partners, we're, like, we're, we're really excited to, to get into this with you guys. Um, so, I have seven seconds. Um, Gwen told me everyone would be mad if I showed like determining the status of claims, you know, vehicle claims based on images because everyone's already doing that. So I'll just skip, I'll skip past this one. Um, you know, this is great stuff too. You know, like the chatbots and letting the users talk to you. And you know, insurance is funny in the in the service space because there's like a very very low volume, and then all of a sudden there's this gigantic spike of volume in the service space because it's a hurricane, and you're you know you've gone from processing 20 claims a day to processing 7,000 claims in a week. Um, you know, so, so this is like, you know, being able to scale out service is a really hard problem and having agents, automated agents that can interact with humans in a useful way, not just a friendly way, but a useful way is in a really, really important technology in, in the insurance space. Uh, so this is going to be the fastest lightning talk on this, everything Google's got going on in ML and I'm happy to talk to you about any of this. Uh, so again, Google is building these Investing in building this technology is not so that we can sell it to customers, although that's a really nice side effect for the cloud people like me, but because we're improving the quality of our own products using machine learning. So Google is an AI company. This is this is internal uh, Google source code, right? This information is not on GitHub, it's not available anywhere. But this is how many TensorFlow models are in Google's source code today. This is the this is not you know science experiments and people fooling around with AI or marketing hype, this is real Google engineers using TensorFlow, machine neural networks, to solve problems within this product space. The wrong way. So um, the offerings that Google has in this, we have a, we have a vision API, it's super straightforward. You send us a vision, we tell you, we, you send us an image, we tell you what's in it. Uh, we have natural language processing. Uh, we give them the text, we give them this Harry Potter fragment. We can tell you, you know, what the, what the nouns are, what the verbs are, what modifies what. We can parse that text, understand the content, the content of it, and provide you a model that indicates what, what information is in that text. Uh, we're, we're doing uh, speech to text, and this is, we're doing this with call center technology as well. So imagine you're on a, you're on, you know, you're, a, you're a call, running a call center, and you want a smart, you want someone listening, you want a computer listening in on two humans talking to each other and providing advice, providing context to that agent while that conversation is happening in real time. So we can process that text. We can run natural language processing on it. We can search a knowledge base and return those results to you. Uh, we can uh, you know, we can use uh, uh, our video intelligence processing to determine the, the, the contents of video. Uh, we, uh, of course, translation. Uh, you know, we're, we, we have neural machine translation, which is an amazing advance in the state of the art in translation. Uh, and we, you know, we have this as an API, a very straightforward. All these APIs are really straightforward. You send us the text, and we translate it. Like it couldn't, it couldn't get any easier. Uh, we have a, a, a dialogue flow application, which allows you to build applications that fully integrate with, um, you know, with Google Home, with Facebook Messenger with Alexa, all of these technologies, and we, we, we have a, a, a codeless uh, API and user interface for building out solutions that interact with these products. The, the purpose, what, what Google is trying to do in this space is democratize AI, is to make it available to everyone, uh, to all companies, to all technologies, you know, to startups, uh, to make it available to everyone so it's not just in the, you know, the purview of Stanford, MIT, PhDs, um, but, you know, a, a tool that's available and accessible to everyone. That's really what we're trying to work on. Um, I'm going uh, to skip the AutoML, although it's amazing to ask me about it afterwards. Um, you know, we built TensorFlow, the, the open source uh, framework for building uh, neural networks. So this is, you do not have to be a Google customer to use TensorFlow, and I, I advise you, uh, I think you should all be looking at it and thinking about it, because this is how Google's doing this. Um, and it's an amazing framework, completely open source, runs on any platform, runs on-prem. Uh, it's taken off like crazy. So this is, you know, the TensorFlow has been extraordinary, extraordinarily successful over the last two years with 11 million downloads. Um, Google has a managed TensorFlow offering called Cloud Machine Learning, which runs TensorFlow on your behalf, entirely handles the provisioning of, of compute resources, as well as does hyper, hyper parameter uh, tuning 
um, out of the box. So it's it's a great uh, managed version of that TensorFlow uh, framework that's uh, open source. We're also accelerating uh, machine learning with hardware. We talked about the we talked about the uh, importance of the compute and the processing power that's available to you. And even so, you will write machine learning models that take 12 hours to run and you know one hour to do a prediction. And that that you know we can't we don't live in the age where one hour is okay. We live in the age where predictions need to happen in real time. So we're accelerating this with hardware. And if you run if you're running your neural networks on Google Cloud, you have access to our um, tensor processing units, which are specialized hardware just for this neural network space. Um, so this is what Google's up to. You know, this is what we're doing. And this is this is uh, uh, you know it's it's a both a technology strategy for um, you know making all of our products better, and it's a uh, marketing strategy for how we're how we're going to market in, in cloud. This is you know this is where this is where our, our uh, secret sauce is. That's it, and I have I have uh, no time for for questions. So thank you, thank you so much. <laughs>